Hello, hello, my paper peeps. Today, I want to share with you the ultimate guide for using alcohol inks in your crafting. From one beginner to another, I want to share my tips and tricks on how to get these beautiful layouts with minimal effort and maximum results. When it comes to alcohol inks, I won't lie to you, I am a beginner. I did, however, try my hand at these 12 years ago and created these plastic tiles I used on some of my tags. And after that, I abandoned these inks for the cut and paste world of scrapbooking. But just recently, I thought I would flex that mixed media muscle and pull these out again. And shockingly, after hours and hours and days and days of playing with these, I have come up with what I think all beginners who are trying out alcohol inks should know. Today, it's all about sharing what I have experienced when it comes to using these and spilling the tea when it comes to tools, techniques, and keeping you sane through the learning phase. I guarantee you'll go from that to this in no time flat with just a few simple tips and techniques I want to reveal to you today. So let's get started. Number one, not all paper are created equally. The type of paper you use is key to producing the effect you want. Here are three I have tried and this is what I have found. Upo apparently is considered superior to all alcohol ink papers. Unfortunately, it is also one of the most expensive and I find the alcohol dries so fast that if you're new to this craft, it really doesn't give you time to play. I also find it's not as forgiving when it comes to using heat on it. The paper either warps or the ink, especially the gold ink, burns and bubbles when heat is applied. You may also come across Tim Holtz's alcohol ink cardstock. Again, a great product, but not for beginners like ourselves. I find that if you don't dilute your alcohol, it will stain the paper. And again, because of its properties, it doesn't allow you to move the ink over a long period of time. The ink soaks right into the paper and dries to me almost instantly. <laughs> In my newbie frustration, I was recommended this craft plastic that I found was perfect for creating all these layouts that you see here. And I'll show you how to do these with ease. For double the amount of paper and almost a fraction, well, I wouldn't say a fraction of the cost, but a little less than what you would spend on Yupo, I was able to create this marbling effect without much struggle. Number two, the marbling effect. I call this the tilting technique. Now, most people would think this is not a beginner technique, but myself being a beginner, <laughs> I found that this was an easy technique to learn. You don't need any other tools other than the craft plastic and your hands and some ink. Do you see how it takes longer for the ink to dry, allowing you to play for a little bit longer to get your desired effect? There is also no staining of the paper upon your initial application of the ink. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a learning curve to creating different looks like this, but I'll show you some of the easier ones that kept me from throwing in the towel yet again. <laughs> Number three, the brush and gradient technique. 
There are a multiple of tools you can use to create a stunning layout like airbrushes, air puffers, brushes, sponges, droppers, stylus pens. But I found as a beginner, let's keep it simple and just use a brush. I make sure I have a separate stash of brushes just for my alcohol inks. I work in a well-ventilated area. Here, I just used a brush and alcohol blending solution to produce this gradient effect. Number four, stamping. I am a stamper, so why not stamp on an inked background like this? Here I used Tim Holtz's Alcohol Lift ink. I use it like a regular stamp pad, and my stamp was able to create this beautiful background. You can also stamp sentiments. Just make sure you use a permanent ink like the Ranger Archival. By the way, I would love to hear your feedback on alcohol ink products and techniques that you have found helpful. So if you are a master at this craft, please, us newbies need all the help we can get. So leave your expert advice in the comment section below. It would be so much appreciated. <laughs> Number five, use your brush to add ink splatter to your page. This one is easy. However, if you're using gold or silver or brass, make sure you shake the bejesus out of the bottle. I'm talking 30 seconds at least, or else you'll get this look instead of this look. Number six, the polymer clay ephemera. If you're a scrapbook journaler, then you'll like this one. I used polymer clay, a layer of alcohol ink to prep the surface. I dropped an array of alcohol inks to cover the surface. Then I waited 15 to 20 minutes for it to dry. I used my cookie cutters to create shapes, then baked it in the oven. After that, I finished it with a resin and voila, Fancy ephemera for my scrapbook journal. Number seven, the acetate art page. I love using acetate to create art pages in my scrapbook journals. Here I have a DIY scrapbook journal that have these spines that you cover up with art pages and then you journal around these. This is the perfect location to showcase your alcohol ink art. This scrapbook journal is part of the Botanicals The Amber Collection, which is a compilation of videos that I have published to show you how to add art pages, tags, tabs, and other scrapbooking techniques to your scrapbook journals. If you're interested in how I created this journal, I'll put a link to the paper line in the description box below and the playlist at the end of this video. So far, if you are getting value from this video, could you do me a favor and stamp that like button so it could spread to the rest of your fellow crafters out there? Thank you so much. And if you enjoy this type of content, then make sure you hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss any of my videos. Number eight, not all alcohols are created equally. There is this one thing I have noticed, and that's that no one tells you what type of alcohol to use when it comes to blending. Firstly, there is 
this resin in alcohol blending solution that allows you to produce this marbling effect. I absolutely and definitely recommend you use the alcohol blending solution if you want to create this effect with ease. Number nine, the Doppler effect. And this comes under the whole alcohol issue and making sure you use the right alcohol. Now, this is the effect I wanted to create. This is what I call the Doppler effect. Unfortunately, if you prep the page just like this, using just your alcohol ink, then dropping your inks like this, you will end up getting this in the end. instead of this. <laughs> now to get this Doppler effect, after you've prepped your page with your alcohol ink, I recommend you go over it with 80 to 99% isopropyl alcohol. That base will allow you to drop the ink and then add subsequent layers in the middle to create what I call the Doppler effect. Number 10, the modern alcohol drop. You'll see a lot of alcohol ink tutorials where you have this blooming effect of the alcohol. What if you don't want that? To achieve a more modern alcohol look like this alcohol drop, I recommend doing the exact same procedure as above. So making sure you prep the page with your ink and then go over it with at least two coats of isopropyl alcohol on top of your base layer to ensure you don't get that bleeding effect or that blooming effect. Number 11. Now in this technique, I used the same inks that I used in the modern alcohol drop, but did not use isopropyl alcohol on top so that I could get that amazing blooming effect of the alcohol. Once you've dropped your next color, allow that to dry so that the middle is completely dry. I say wait about 30 seconds, then place your gold foil on top. The ring should still be a little wet so that the foil can stick. You may need to burnish it a bit on that ring and the ring ledge should be able to show through so you can use the blunt end of your paintbrush to help burnish the foil in. I did find that there was a small window for you to accomplish this. <laughs> in my experience and after uh, several attempts, I either waited too long for the middle to dry, thus preventing any foil from attaching, to not waiting long enough, and the middle of the circle would be ruined by the foil. <laughs> Again, this is where the trial and error comes in. Number 12, safety first. Always work in a well-ventilated area, which means open up a window. The off-gassing from the alcohol can give you a wicked headache and make you feel really sick. Second, protect your work surface with plastic and a glass mat like this. And last but not least, wear gloves to protect those beautiful hands and that fancy manicure. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you would like to see more tips and tricks on how I jazz up my scrapbook journals, then you'll want to check out these videos here. Take care and we'll see you in those videos. Bye!